praise God from whom all blessings flow. I greet you in the marvelous name of the resurrected and now ascended and soon to be coming again, Jesus Christ. Um, I, I apologize for the technical difficulties we had coming in, but I'm glad so many of you hung on in there. Now is the time that you could go back and share with your friends and let them know that we are on the air live. Amen. And go ahead and share while you're doing that. Amen. This is our Resurrection Day uh, worship service, and we got our youth that are in charge of service today. So we're going to have a good time in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. After you go ahead and like and share, let me just thank all of you who last Sunday afternoon uh, participated in the seven last words of Christ. If you did not see that, it's archived on this page. You need to go back and see it. We had a good time in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And then it was so good to see so many new Bethelites on our sunrise service this morning. We had a good time running, telling that. Amen. All right. Immediately following service today, uh, some of you, a lot of you, have sent in your prayers. I'm sending you back the correction on your prayers. You should have that full prayer to me if, you, yeah, you should have that full prayer to me on Wednesday, including intercession. Amen. If I sent you back some corrections to make, go ahead and make those corrections, send them in. Amen. So you could get blessed real good. All right. Uh, we got our youth recitations today. And then remember this Friday at noon. This Friday at noon, the I Am The Church movement, uh, we're going to be doing uh, a giveaway. We'll have, um, we'll have over 100 pounds, one-pound packs of uh, ground beef. We'll also have uh, a lot of fruits and vegetables. We'll also have uh, eggs. We'll also have um, in-home COVID testing kits. We're giving all that away at noon on Friday. All volunteers, make sure you're here by 11 o'clock. Amen. All right. And though a lot of people are taking this thing for granted, uh, we understand that the Omicron stealth virus is amongst us now, and there are rising rates in a bunch of states already. So make sure you got your booster shots. Amen. We start our worship service off this morning. We have our prayer uh, by Jesus is alive. Amen. Heavenly Father, you are so wonderful in the source of all goodness. We worship you and give you our heart, minds, and bodies. You are the source of love and grace in the world. We pray that you will help us to grow in your goodness so that we may be the light that shines in the darkness. Help us to dwell in your truth and never be shaken by doubt. Help us to see your vision for our lives and to follow you in all ways. We ask that you would give us the energy to care for the doubtful and the lost. Help us to use our creativity to comfort the brokenhearted and downtrodden. Through your almighty power, help us to bring peace and joy to everyone. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Hallelujah. One, two, three. Jesus is alive. Amen. I need some more uh, hearts and emojis going up for our children. They did a wonderful job. Let me thank all of our parents uh, who brought your children out, and you've been doing such a wonderful job uh, during this pandemic. We thank our ministry leader uh, as well, Sister Sharon Holt Harris. Uh, let me thank uh, our Teacher of the Year, Sister Trevitra Austin. <laughs> She's in here today, man. And uh, let me thank Arnetta George. Let me thank Sister Gloria McSwain, Sister Iris Thomas. Uh, and let me thank the kids, and I'll come back to the parents later on. Uh, let me thank uh, Ada Avon and Tara Hurchins. Let me thank Amina Wright. Uh, Sapphire Hagens, amen, Preston, Preston, uh, TJ, T Travis Cruz, uh, Navi, Navi Lettenhan, uh, and then we had Chase Hudson singing with them this morning for one, two, three, Jesus is alive, amen. At this time, we're going to pause for the calls. Uh, and we want you to be able to give your tithe and offering at this time. They're going to put some numbers on the screen for our electronic uh, means of giving, as well as our post office box. They'll flash that on the screen momentarily. And let me just thank all of you who have already given your tithe and offering, either uh, through your class leaders, or you've mailed them in, or you've even dropped them off this morning, amen. And then I really want to thank all of you who are using the electronic applications. Uh, we have both Givelify uh, as well as the offerings. And God, we just want to thank you for Jesus, his life, his death, his resurrection. For he is the resurrection and the life. Anybody that believes in him, though dead, going to live again. And whoever lives and believes in him, cannot die. So we ask you, Lord God, to take these, our tithe, which belong to you, and our offerings, which we give freely, so that your word may go forth with power and with unction and with authority. Bless us this morning, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. All right. Next up, we got the scripture uh, by young brother Michael Smith. He's going to be reading 12 verses from the 24th chapter of Luke. That's uh, Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. And then that's going to be followed by uh, our sermonic song this morning, God's Not Dead. Amen. The scripture, Luke chapter 6, verses 17 through 26. And we're going to be reading from the King James Version. And he came down with them and stood in the plain, the, and the company of his disciples, and a great multitude of people out of Judea and Jerusalem, and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they all were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for their bent virtue out of him, and healed them all. And he lifted his eyes open on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye for him, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now. For ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil, for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye that day, and leap for joy, for, behold, your reward is in great heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophet. 
but woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for then, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. God's word for God's people. God's not dead, he's definitely alive. How do I know? Because he lives inside of me. Amen. Uh, let me thank again uh, Aiden and Ava and Tara Hurchins, uh, Amina Wright, Sapphire Hagens, Preston Oresti, um, Travis Cruz, Navi Lettenhan, and then Destiny Robbins, Chase Hudson, uh, and my Travia Washington joined, amen, on God is not dead, he's alive. Let me pick up the rest of the parents while I'm at it. Uh, Sister Cynthia Hagens, uh, Sister uh, Rosalind Davis, Sister Beverly Lettenhand, amen. And I believe I said uh, Sister Arnetta George already, and if I did, I said it again, amen. Our uh, scripture for today for this resurrection morning is going to come from uh, the 19th chapter of the book of John. The 19th chapter of the book of John. We take you back to the cross, the lynching tree. One of Jesus' final words from the cross. And I'm just going to read verse 30 within your hearing. And I'm going to be talking about this morning to tell us die, perfecting your purpose. To tell us die, perfecting your purpose. I'm just going to give you an opportunity to get that in your brain. Uh, you spell to tell us die, T E T E L E S T A I. T E T E L E S T A I. All right. John chapter uh, 19, verse 30. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up 
the Spirit. Lord God, come on lawn, uh, the half-read book, uh, the email started but never sent, the abandoned diet, the car still up on the blocks, the degree that was never finished, the phone calls that were never returned. And then we have more serious things like abandoned and neglected children, shoot-ups and drive-bys in malls and on our streets, the job that we quit in a fit of anger and cussing, the wrecked marriage, the bills that were never paid, the taxes that were never filed, and the promises that were never kept. All of us go through life leaving behind us a trail of unfinished product projects and unfulfilled dreams. Because the truth is, and you know this even when I say it, it's for degrees on the very first day that you enroll in class. That's why employers don't give retirement packages when an employee starts a job because we all know that it's hard to start. It's not hard to start something, but it's a challenge to try and finish. Go on, tell your neighbor, uh, seem like I'm going to be typing IKTR all throughout this sermon. Yeah. And it does not matter whether we are talking about ourselves as individuals or our families, or our churches, or even our communities, or even our nation. At every level of our lives, there's a whole lot of unfinished business. It, it occurred to me that our nation is good at starting wars, we're just not good at finishing. Anybody ever remember the war on poverty? Somebody type unfinished business. Anybody remember the war on drugs? Gone type unfinished business. Peace in the Middle East? Unfinished business. No child left behind? Unfinished business. Housing the homeless? Unfinished business. The struggle for equality and liberty and justice for all? Yeah, go in and type unfinished business. Now, how about this one? The Dallas Cowboys going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Unfinished business. Yeah, yeah. Our, see, most of our life uh, and most of our lives are lived with unfinished business, and we are filled with unfinished business. And one of the greatest fears is that we will either run out of time, we'll run out of chances, or we'll run out of opportunities before we finish. Because all around us is the trace evidence that we die too young, too soon, too quick, too tragic. We die with our work unfinished and our dreams unfulfilled and our plans incomplete. In fact, I believe that the only person in history who never left behind any unfinished business was Jesus Christ. That Jesus came to the end of his life and in a moment of excruciating pain, absolute victory and total truthfulness declared, it is finished. Now, now watch this. He did not say, I am finished, as to imply that he was dying, defeated, humiliated, and exhausted. Rather, he cried, it is finished, to signify that I have successfully completed the work I was sent to do. Uh, can I take you there? It was Friday in Jerusalem, and a huge crowd had gathered out at a place beyond the city walls called Skull Hill. It was on the north side of the outskirts of the city, just a hop, skip, and a jump from the Damascus Gate. The site of this lynching, uh, or crucifixion, was along a well-traveled road. The, the Romans enjoyed, as the superpower of the day, convening their crucifixions in public places like lynching trees because public murders always had a useful, solitary effect on the masses. 
just like shooting unarmed black boys or keeping a knee on a victim's neck has today. For three hours, this lynching had proceeded without any problems until the sky went black all across the city. There were guttural screams and hidden, hideous cries, moans, and other unidentifiable sounds. And then, as suddenly as it had started, the darkness lifted, disappeared, and vanished. One glance at the center cross made it clear that that man named Jesus, who had been arrested as a political prisoner with religious overtones, he wouldn't make it much longer. He looked dead already. His body quivered uncontrollably. His chest heaved with every tortured breath. The soldiers knew from their long experience of taking people out that he probably wouldn't even last till sundown. Then it happened. He cleared his throat <clears throat> and shouted something. Father, forgive them. That got everybody's attention. Then coughing up blood said to the criminal next to him, today you're going to be with me in paradise. His eyes rolled back in his head and he shouted, my God, my God, wow, why, why? Hast thou forsaken me? Somebody in the crowd shouted back at him. Moments passed. Death drew near. Then a hoarse whisper about needing a drink. The soldiers put some sour wine vinegar on a sponge, lifted up to his lips with a stalk of hyssop. He moistened his lips and took a deep breath. And if you listen close enough, you could hear death rattling in his throat. He had less than a minute to live. Then he spoke again. But it was a quick shout. It was so quick that if you weren't paying attention, you would have missed it altogether in the confusion. Just one word in the Greek, to tell a stop, meaning it is finished. It's a crucial word because it signifies a successful end to a particular course of action. To tell a star is the word you use when you walk across the stage at the graduation. To tell a star is the word that you use when your last child graduates from college. To tell a star is the word that you use when you make a final payment on your house or the last payment on your car. It's the word that you use when you're heaving across the finish line of your first 5K race. But this word, to tell us die, means more than I survived. It means I did exactly what I set out to do. But there's more than just the verb itself because to tell us die is a verb in the perfect tense in the Greek. Y'all got to hear me. That, that means it speaks of an action which has been completed in the past, but has results that will continue into the future. Y'all don't feel me yet. It's, it's different from the past tense, which be, looks back on an event and says, that happened. The perfect tense carries the idea that what happened in the past is still working today, and it's still going to be working tomorrow. Somebody should have shot it right there. Yeah, somebody just typed, the blood still works. So when Jesus cried out, it is finished, he meant it was finished in the past, it's still finished in the present, and it's going to be finished in the future. Because to tell us that was the Savior's cry of victory. When he died, he left no unfinished business behind. What Jesus accomplished in his death was so awesome, so total and complete that it never could be repeated again. Jesus finished his work. But hold up, Pastor. What difference does that make for us now? I'm glad y'all asked that question because I've got the answer. Jesus finished his work to empower you to finish yours. <laughs> go on, look at your neighbor and say, go on, finish that thing. 
See, God wants us at the conclusion of our lives to be able to look back over our experience and perfect our purpose and say, to tell us that it is finished. I did everything that God called me to do, claimed me to do, commissioned me to do, anointed me to do, appointed me to do. I did everything, and I have perfected my purpose. And like the Apostle Paul, we'll be able to declare, I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. I finished the course. And now I'm ready to be offered up. And I wonder if there's anybody listening to me today who wants to be able to finish what you started. Somebody just text, I want to finish. Yeah, I want to finish. And, and that's what Jesus made possible. He made it possible in this life for us to perfect our purpose, for us to be able to answer any agony. We should be able to bear any burden, to cope with any crisis, to deal with any defeat, to erase any error, and to frame any failure so we can finish what God has called us to do. Can I help somebody right now? Because I believe that Jesus wants to give us a lesson while dying on how to perfect our purpose and finish that thing. If you're interested, interested just text, preach on, pastor. Amen. Okay, that's what I was born to do. Because if we're going to finish and perfect our purpose, we first have to face it. Everybody type face it. F-A-C-E-I-T. Face it. Yeah, we first got to face it. See, it is naive to think that the enemy of your soul and mind is going to stand idly by while we do God's will, declare God's praise, and work for God's causes. In this life, if you are right, if you are honest, if you are excellent, if you are authentic, you will have to go through some things. You do know the type IKTR right there, right? Because no child of God walks through this life untried, untested, and unmolested. We won't and don't glide through this life on carpets of comfort or beds of ease. We're going to be, if we're going to be God's people, do God's will, and fulfill God's purpose, you got to have to settle it in your spirit that there will be challenges and rejections and difficulties and hardships that you're going to have to face. And yet, God sent me here today to have you to hear these words and to encourage somebody that whatever you got to face, Face it. Somebody go on type face it again. See, because by the grace of God, you can appropriate any agony. You can bury any blunder. You can carry any cross. You can defy any demon. You can engage any enemy. You can face any foe. You can conquer any calamity, endure any adversity that God calls upon you to endure. Make no mistake, this is more than a ceremonial greeting, the ceremonial gathering this morning, because the crucifixion is real. And it is our experience, as you seek to do the will of God, you will face rebuttal, and you real, will face betrayal, and you may even face crucifixion. The devil was against Jesus, He's going to be against you. The devil lied on Jesus. They're going to lie on you. They persecuted Jesus. They're going to persecute you. They victimized Jesus, and they're going to victimize you. Plato commented in his Republic that a man who is holy, just, and good becomes intolerable in the eyes of those who do not do good nor desire to see good come to pass. This world will not tolerate those who are serious about their faith, who try to walk their walk, and who try to live what they live. 
There's not a single person anywhere who has ever spoken up, stepped up, or stood up for justice and equality and right who has not been excoriated and investigated and humiliated by the CIA, the NSA, the FBI, and the IRS. People will punish you just for succeeding. They'll, they'll hate on you because you, you got somewhere, because you got somewhere. That's why they crucified Jesus. And if you stand up for something, they're going to come after you too. Whenever you work for justice, whenever you try to change things for the better, you will bear the cross. Somebody just text, get ready, get ready. Yeah, but you got to face it anyway. Because if you're going to finish, you must first face it, and then you got to frame it. Yeah, that's F-R-A-M-E, frame it. Yeah, everybody just text frame it. See, Jesus was about to go through everything he went through because he did not let anyone else put a frame on his experience. Because you do know it's the frame that determines how you see the picture. Boy, that pastor preaching, and y'all ain't there yet. See, Jesus determined what his frame of reference was going to be. And that kept him focused, F-O-C-U-S-E-D. One of the reasons we often don't finish and don't perfect our purpose like Jesus is that we are not focused. And one of the reasons we are not focused is that we got the wrong frame. <laughs> Go on, tell your good-looking neighbor, change that frame, neighbor, change that frame. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the writer of Hebrews, while reflecting on the finished work of Jesus Christ, was led to declare, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. It was his framed focus that empowered him to finish. Well, what was that joy that was set before him? I need you to type this for me. It was just for me, just for me. The joy set before means that Jesus endured the cross thinking about and dreaming about you. So God wants me to tell you this morning that you mean something to him. And he ain't finished with you yet. Yeah. Y'all ain't feeling me yet. Okay. All right. But, but, but can I help you? Can I wax theological for a second? Because... This cry from the cross appears in John's gospel. And John, more than any of the other writers, had a high Christological perspective. For John, Jesus was not just some king of the Jews like Matthew portrayed, nor just the servant of man like Mark said, or the God-man like Luke portrayed him. But for John, Jesus was God in Galilean cloth. Which is to say, in John's gospel, Jesus stepped into the bio data of human existence and became like us so that we could become like God. That through the incarnation of Christ, our uh, and God immersed God's self in humanity so that God might restore our divinity. The Gospel of John is written in the shadow of Genesis. For what John envisions here is God starting all over again. Yeah, with the creation because the first creation was ruined. So John sees in Jesus that God is starting all over again. That's why he, he opens his book by saying, in the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. 
And the word became flesh, and we beheld his glory. Come here for a moment, because this perspective paints a different portrait of what happened on the cross. Because when Jesus said, it is finished, in John's view, he could surrender his physical form because now he knew his work would continue through the church. Let me say that another way. His incarnation made it possible for our regeneration and is to continue through infiltration until the entire creation experiences restoration. Can I break that down for you? That God came in the flesh. That's incarnation. Repopulated the gene pool and in so doing created the possibility of persons who know God, love God, obey God, and walk in the love of God. That's regeneration. Now, through regenerated incarcerations, that in regenerated incarnations, there's to be an infiltration of spirit-bred, spirit-led, spirit-fed personalities into the ecosystem of life and the structures of this world. In other words, the presence of Christ in us is supposed to be viral. I dare you to smile at somebody and say, I forgot to tell you. I'm contagious. Yeah, and not with the coronavirus. Ah, oh, you know what that means? That because of the presence of Christ in me, if you keep hanging out with me, you keep associating with me, you might come broken, but you're going to get healed. I, 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 I'm contagious. I'm, I'm viral. I'm going to run tell that. And if you keep hanging around me, you might come to me weak, but you're going to get strong. You're going to find the joy in serving, the peace in praying, the life in loving, the power in praising. You're going to learn to walk, to work for what is right, and you're going to feel the presence of God in your life. You're going to live to shout the praises of God because the presence of Christ in me has made me Contagious. See, his focus and framework were all about us. When Jesus cried to tell us die, it was a double entendre in the Greek manuscript. The phrase had meaning that was both temporal. Everybody type in temporal, T-E-M-P-O-R-A-L. Both temporal and theological. Come here for a moment because in the temporal, it meant finish. But in the theological, it meant accomplish. Y'all will get this in a little bit. In the temporal, it referred to what they can do to me. But in the theological, it pointed to what I'm going to do for them. In the temporal, my incarnation, my identity. Identification, my humiliation are finished. But in the theological, your restoration, regeneration, exaltation has been accomplished. Ah, oh, I wish I had time right there. But, but you ought to embrace that in your heart this resurrection morning, that there is always more than one way to look at your situation. And in perfecting your purpose, you got to develop the ability to exegete on both sides of the equation. Come here for a moment. I'm broke. That's true, and that's temporal. <laughs> I'm blessed. That's theological. I'm in a crisis. That's temporal. I'm celebrating anyhow. That's theological. I'm struggling. That's temporal. I'm destined to succeed. That's theological. I'm hurt. That's temporal. By his stripes, I'm already healed. That, that's theological. I'm surrounded by enemies. Uh, that's temporal. But God prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. That's theological. That they plotting against me. 
that's temporal. But no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. That's theological. Weeping may endure for a night. That's temporal. But joy, I said joy is coming in the morning. That's theological. See, they did the best. They did the worst to heaven's best. And yet he faced it in his own framework. And in perfecting his purpose, Jesus was able to focus, then stamp the receipt, paid in full. And I dare you today, name your sin. Yeah, just look at your house coat wearing neighbor and say, which one of my sins, which one of my sins you want me to name? See, whatever your sin is, I came to tell you, he's already paid for it. Let me see if I can help you here. My dear friend and brother, Reverend Gregory Till at the First Baptist Church in Bladenburg, North Carolina, he tells a story about when he was trying to teach his then two-year-old son, Evan, how to go to the potty. How he walked him through the whole potty training thing, how to handle his business and clean up after himself. And he took him through all the steps, one by one, through the whole process, all the way to the conclusion, where he was to reach back and pull the handle. And when he pulled the handle, the mess he had made would be taken care of. So they went on a trip, and the son started pulling on Pastor Taylor, saying, Daddy, Daddy, I got to go, I got to go. And Pastor Taylor said, okay, there's a rest stop right up here. And when they went to the rest stop, Pastor Taylor said, son, do you think you could handle it by yourself? And the son said, yeah, daddy, I'm a big boy and now I can handle this all by myself. So his son went into the stall in the restroom and Pastor Taylor said he thought everything was going right until 10 or 15 minutes had passed by. So he went to the stall and said, son, is, is everything all right in there? And the son said, yeah, daddy, everything all right. I did everything you taught me to do. I handled my business just like you taught me. But, 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 but I can't find the handle to finish the job. His daddy said, uh, son, open up the stall for me. He opened up the stall and he looked at the toilet, then looked at the disappointed face of his son and began to smile. He said, son, I forgot to tell you, in this kind of situation, the maker of the toilet has already made preparations to handle your business for you, to handle your mess for you, for you to, so you don't have to pull down on nothing. When you get done with your mess, all you got to do is turn your back and walk away. That, 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 that shouted me because I came this resurrection morning to tell somebody, anybody, stop trying to clean up your own mess. All you got to do is turn your back and walk away. Because on the cross, Jesus said to tell us that it is finished. Finish. My purpose has been perfected. Finish. The price has been paid. Finish. The debt has been settled. Finish, the battle has been fought. Finish, the victory has been won. Finish, the devil is defeated. Finish, the mission has been accomplished. Finish, my work has been completed. Finish, the plan has been executed. Finish, the calling has been fulfilled. Finish, see you when I see you. Finish, arrivederci. Adios, fare be well. Till we meet again, Saranara, our Avaro, our Revador, O Riva, our Vida Stan, finish, ciao, aloha, shalom, namaste, peace out, finish, na 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 na, na 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 na, hey hey hey, goodbye. That 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 that's that's that. Finish, cheerio, pip, pip, totally do. Finish, see you later, alligator. Finish, Paul Harvey.
Harvey. Good day. Finish. Bye-bye. Finish. Completed. Consummated. Concluded. Finish. But my dear old mama would say, every shut eye ain't sleep, and every goodbye ain't gone. And I got to say that this morning because early, early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. It is finished. Your purpose can be perfected. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. 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 After the word of God goes out, we always pause because God's word can, cannot go out, according to Isaiah, and return void to God until it accomplishes its purpose. We pray that purpose this morning will be for somebody on Resurrection Morning 2022 to declare Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. They're going to play a song, and that song is called Just Come. And that's all we want you to do this morning. And we made it so convenient for you. Just like Reverend Taylor's son, the maker is always already designed for you. All you have to do is call the number that's on your screen. That number is 1-850-296-7367. 1-850-296-7367. If you text to that number, J-E-S-U-S, our ministers will be in touch with you. We'll lead you to Jesus Christ as both your Lord and as your Savior. Or you can just text JOIN, J-O-I-N, to 850-296-7367. Text JOIN if you want to join our New Bethel Church family. We'd love to have you as one of our new be the mics, new creation with viral contagion as Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. 850-296-7367. We'll get you there. Hallelujah. I want you to stay attended because, you know, now we've got our kids coming up and they've done such a wonderful job. I want to see a lot of emojis go up for our children, a lot of hearts, a lot of thumbs ups. As they come now to present, uh, we'll first have a series of recitations. Y'all remember how y'all used to do those speeches? See, back in our day, well, I want to talk about corporal punishment because uh, that'll get my people in trouble. Uh, I believe first we got coming up is going to be recitation, recitation uh, by Navi Lettenhand. That's going to be followed by Aiden Hurchins and then Amina Wright, and then TJ, Travis Cruz, and then Preston, and then Ava, Ava Hutchins, and then Jacob McCoy. Let me thank Jacob's mama, Dr. Krishanda uh, McCoy. Amen. And his grandmama, <laughs> Sister Geraldine Curry. Amen. I'll come back right after they finish the recitation. is risen today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Happy Easter, everybody. Jesus rose on Easter day. Jesus rose on Easter day. The stones rolled away. He, he conquered death on that day. He lives again to show us the way. Christ the Lord. It's reason today. Happy Easter, everybody. Going to church on Easter morning, up with the sunrise. Excitement is in the air. Easter morning, Easter morning is finally here. Brand new clothes and freshly washed face. Going to church to give Thanks for God's grace.
happy each and everybody. May you each be happy. May the day be bright. May you enjoy the sweet and sweet relax. But remember the meaning. Remember God's truth. Remember the revelation. Let you show out love. Jesus is good. Jesus is good. Jesus is great. He died for us. Oh, what a fate. He rose again on this Easter Saturday. He loves us so much that he gave us his fun day. Jelly beans. Red is for the blood he gave. Green is for the grass he made. Yellow is for the sun so bright. Orange is for the edge of night. Black is for the sins we made. White is for the grace we gave. He gave. Purple is for the for his hour of sorrow. Pink is for a new tomorrow. A handful of jelly beans, colorful and sweet, is a prayer promise. A friend's small treat. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's it. I need some more lovies and some more thumbs up here. I'm putting in some myself. Amen. I want to thank uh, Samson Samuel and Felicia Redding. Thank you for bringing um, young Preston Orestes uh, to rehearsal. He did a good job. And then Jacob. Jacob, I got to get Jacob a uh, preacher's license, don't I? Amen. All right, we're going to continue now uh, with, uh, we're going to have another song. This song, I believe, is by our older kids, um, and then we're going to have, that'll be followed by a skit by the older kids, and then I believe we're going to wrap it up with a uh, little sci-fi. Amen. <laughs> Can our attitude cause us to miss celebrating you today? Three friends have gathered here for Resurrection Day service. They have been best friends since childhood. This is one of their favorite times of the year. They are so excited and filled with joy. One of them is more concerned with fashion and comfort and misses out the importance of worship. What barriers keeps us from focusing on God? I can't see the cross. My mask is in the way. Actors Martravia Washington, Destiny Robbins, and Tar Hurchins. Woo! Better not to check our seats. You can't see here. This is a safety room. Give me that thumb. We've been sitting in these seats for years. Now come on, let's sit down. Oh, I hope we don't get in trouble by the head ushers. We're fine. We could have been here a lot earlier if no one was talking to Stephen. Come on, he's our neighbor. It's like we haven't seen him in a while. The next time, just text him. We have to get to church early on Easter. Hmm. This is turning out to be a very special Easter. The pastor is getting ready to speak. You can't put your mask down during service. I can't see what everyone is doing, wearing if I do that. I think I'll put my mask up on my face so no, so no one can recognize me. Now my glasses are starting to fog up. You gotta tell me what Aaron is wearing. No way, I'm here to worship. I'll be a commentator in fashion show. Who said sit in four rows up? Oh no, I can't see them. Where they wearing a purple and yellow mask? Who wears those colors together? Why don't you pray or something? I need to know who that is. Raise your hand. What? Raise your 
in here so the usher can come over here and he can tell us who that is. I don't need no usher or anything. Come on, send me your temperature check or something. Girl, you going nuts. Now my allergies are starting to act up. Well, take the stylus out. I can't do that. It'll look a hot mess if I, if I take my picture. Can you even see the car? You're right. I am having trouble seeing it. Here, stop messing with me for a minute. I'm not wearing no floor in this. Come on, just for a minute. I need to see who, what everyone is wearing and maybe I can catch a glimpse of the cross and maybe the pastor can see that I'm here for Easter service. I think he already knows. Yeah, now I can see much better. I'm going to get up. I'm going to go and pray. I don't want no one to see me with these masks on. I'm going to keep this mask for the rest of the service. I'm leaving. I don't want no one sitting with this thing going. Wait, you can't go. I haven't got to see what everyone is wearing. I mean, we haven't heard the sermon yet. I think I can remember it from last Easter. Hachoo! Oh no, the usher's coming over here. Here, take my hand and I'll lead you out. Okay. What an Easter. Resurrection is not our only Easter story. It should be thought about just once a year for every believer, whether we recognize it or not. It's the daily truth, our lifeline, and our hope. The resurrection proved who Jesus is. And Jesus Christ, our Lord, was shown to be the Son of God when God properly raised him from the deed, from the dead, by means of the Holy Spirit. The death he died, he died to sin, one for all, but the life. He lives, he lives to God in the same way. Count yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that Jesus raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. That may you know what he is hope to which he has called you. What are you, the riches of his gloriousness, inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe? According to the work of his great might, they have worked working Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and domain, and above every name that is named, not only his age, but also his one to come. And with great power, the absolutes were given there, testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to great mercy, he has caused us to be born again, to living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, unfired, unfading, kept in heaven for you. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, though Jesus, God will bring him those who have fallen asleep. Happy Resurrection Day. All right, excellent. Cut. Glory to the King, little children come and say, Glory, glory to the King. Happy Easter. Amen. Come on, as uh, Sister G would say, give him a hand. Amen. I am so proud of our children, so glad for our parents and our ministry leaders. 
Uh, amen. I did want to mention uh, on that last song, that was our young adults. Uh, so that was uh, Matravia Washington, uh, Sister Destiny Robbins, uh, Sister Tara Hurchins. It seemed like Tara had a bunch of shout outs doing that song. And uh, then Chase Hudson. And then that was followed by the skit. I tried to uh, pin that on your chat box. Uh, but the name of that skit was, I can't see the cross because my mask is in the way. They did a great job on that, Chase Hudson, uh, Matravia, uh, Destiny, and Tara. And then the final recitation to close us out was Sister Sapphire Hagens. Amen. I need to see some more emojis for them and give them a great big hand. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us on Resurrection Sunday. Uh, we're going to close out now with our benediction. Please don't leave before you get your benedictory blessing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. After me, and now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you now and forever. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us on this Resurrection Sunday. I'm going to the egg hunt. I love you. I love you. I love you. And you know I love you. God bless you.